Dear students, I am Dr. Ali Sabur, Professor of Vascular Surgery at Shams Medical School. This presentation will describe how to take medical history and examine a patient presenting with swelling or a lump. It is a preparation for your clinical class. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to ask focused systemic questions for patients presenting with a swelling, perform local examination for a patient with a swelling to elicit relevant signs, and be ready for the clinical session to apply and refine these skills, correlate the gathered information, and formulate a complete diagnosis. In surgical practice, it is common for patients to present with lumps or swellings. This is a general scheme for how to ask about and examine a swelling. The complaint of the patient is usually a lump or a swelling. For any complaint, we should ask about the duration. The question is, when was the lump first noticed? Write down, the lump was first noticed, for example, six months ago. Don't say it's a lump of six months duration, because sometimes the duration is more than this duration, but the patient only noticed it six months ago. You should analyze the complaint, starting by asking about the onset and the cause. The onset can be acute, the patient remembers precisely when did it happen. Insidious, the onset is not very precise or accidentally discovered. A good question is what made the patient notice the lump? The four common answers for this question would be I felt it or I saw it on washing. It started with pain then I felt the lump at the painful site. Someone else noticed it and told me about it. I found it on self-examination, which is common in breast lumps in females. Now you want to know the course of the, of the swelling. So a good question is, has the lump changed since, since it was first noticed? The course can be stationary, progressive, fluctuant, as in some inflammatory lesions, or regressive, as in inflammation responding to treatment. The picture shows an infected keratinous cyst, what is usually referred to as sebaceous cyst, and the patient will describe it as having an insidious onset, with stationary or slowly progressive course, then when inflammation occurs, the course will be progressive. And if he takes antibiotics, the swelling will regress. And if the inflammation is recurrent, which is not infrequent, the course will be described as fluctuant. Then you should ask the patient if the swelling is painful or not. If the swelling is painful, you should analyze the symptom of pain. In particular, the character of pain, throbbing pain usually means pus under tension, and the relation of pain to the appearance of swelling. In inflammatory swellings, pain appears first, then the swelling is noticed. On the other hand, malignant swellings are painless at first and produces pain when they infiltrate the surrounding tissues. It is important to ask the patient about the cause of the swelling. The patient can sometimes relate the swelling to a specific cause. This may not be related sometimes, may not be relevant, but you should ask and record what the patient says. A classical example is hematoma related to trauma. If you suspect any underlying cause, you may ask about it. Ask the patient if the swelling has ever disappeared. Classically, reducible hernias appear on coughing and disappears on lying down. Ask about other swellings in the body. The classical example of multiple chronic swellings are multiple lymph nodes. And finally, 
ask about the effect of the swelling on the general condition. Inflammatory swellings can cause fever. Chronic specific inflammations for a long time can cause weight loss and advanced malignancy can cause weight loss. The next step is to start examination and examination always start by general examination. This is followed by local examination and local examination starts by inspection. You can remember the components of inspection by six S's. Inspection should describe first the site. Use anatomical terms and bony landmarks. This will make your description accurate. Next comes the size. This is important for decision making and for follow up of patients. The shape, sometimes certain swellings have a characteristic shape. Remember that lumps are three dimensional, so it could not be circular, it is hemispherical. The surface of the swelling may look smooth or irregular on inspection. The edge of the swelling can be seen well or ill-defined. These will be judged more accurately on palpation. Comment on the skin overlying, which could be discolored, stretched, showing scars of previous operation, infiltrated, or harbors a discharging sinus. Finally, swellings may demonstrate a special character. An expensile impulse on coughing for hernias, a pulsatile appearance on arterial aneurysms, and so on. Second comes the palpation, which is a very important component of the examination. The first thing to comment on palpation is warmth and tenderness. Inflammatory lesions are warm and tender. Assess the skin temperature with the dorsal surface of your fingers because they are usually dry and warm, dry and cool. You can see the effect of tenderness on the patient's face. Then you should confirm the data you have elicited by inspection, namely the size, surface and edge, which are more accurately judged by palpation. It is very important to judge the consistency and decide whether the swelling is cystic or solid. And if cystic, whether it is ten cystic or lax cystic, and if it is solid, whether it is soft, firm or hard. Clinical demonstration will explain the clinical assessment of swelling consistency. This includes cross fluctuation test, badges test, tapping for fluid thrill, translucency, and other things. So be ready to watch this and practice it in your clinical session. The relation of the swelling to the surrounding structure and mobility comes next. Whether or not it is attached to the overlying skin, underlying, underlying fascia, muscles or bone, and if mobile, whether it is mobile in all directions or in one direction only. Notice that swellings arising from longitudinal structures, such as nerves, are mobile across the axis of the nerve, but not along its axis. For abdominal swellings, you should decide whether the swelling is extra-abdominal or intra-abdominal deep to the abdominal muscles. The clinical demonstration session will explain the clinical assessment of swellings, mobility, and relation to surrounding structures in details. Some swellings have a special character. For example, the hernia gives an expansile impulse on cuff. An arterial aneurysm gives expansile pulsations synchronous with the heartbeats. Swellings with an underlying arteriovenous fistula transmits a palpable machinery thrill. So you should look for a special character of the swelling. Lastly, no examination in surgery is completed without examination of the draining lymph nodes. 
An abscess of the foot can cause inflammatory lymphadenitis in the groin lymph nodes. A breast malignant tumor can spread and cause axillary lymph node metastasis. Then comes the percussion. Percussion over and around the swelling may give additional information. This is evident in intra-abdominal swellings, where intestine with air inside will give a resonant note on percussion. Auscultation may as well give extra information. A bruit or a murmur is heard over vascular swellings with high turbulent flow. Bowel sounds can be heard over a hernia if the hernia sac contains intestine. There are some investigations that can follow and be, give very important information about the swellings. Aspiration is a bedside maneuver that can be done for cystic swellings to confirm diagnosis and send aspirate for bacteriological and cytological examination. A plain x-ray can diagnose bone tumors, as in this patient, where the plain x-ray is diagnostic. You will know more about this in your orthopedics course. A blood picture may show leukocytosis in bacterial inflammation. Ultrasound can clearly differentiate cystic and solid swellings. The above swelling is a solid swelling and the low lower swelling, the lower picture is of a cystic swelling. Biopsy, whether aspiration, through cut needle, incisional biopsy or excision biopsy will provide the histopathological diagnosis. Finally, you should formulate a phrase that includes the different components of the diagnosis, which are the anatomical, the clinical and the pathological and the etiological diagnosis. For this infected keratinous cyst seen in the picture, a formulated diagnosis could be an acutely inflamed cystic swelling of the face, most probably sebaceous or keratinous cyst with secondary bacterial infection. What are the causes of multiple swellings? This is your homework. Be ready with this homework in the face-to-face -face session. And for further references, please review Browse 5th edition from page 36 to page 40. Thank you.